Hey guys, in this video I'll be answering one of the most asked questions by beginners when they first get into the charts and that is of course where should I place my stops and where should I place my targets. So without further ado guys, let's get into this video. Placing stops and targets when you first start out can be a little bit daunting and you likely find that each trade seems to have a different rationale behind why a stop was placed in the location that it was. This is called discretionary trading. This is essentially human-based trading. It requires you as the trader to look at the price action and decide where you think price will exhaust and essentially where you think your trade won't be worth the paper that your trading system is written down on. When you begin to expand your knowledge as a trader, you'll find that you can become more and more mechanical with your approach, adding indicators and concepts of advanced market structure into the equation of where to place your stops and targets. But for now though, the main question should be, where should you avoid placing your stops and where should you avoid placing those targets? Let's first look at where you should place your stop losses, as this is actually one of the easiest questions to answer, and you likely have one of those, ah, oh yeah moments, once I explain this a little bit further. Let's just take a step back and actually think about what the stop loss is used for in the market. Of course it's used to prevent excessive losses and manage and mitigate some of the risks associated with trading, but we need to actually look at it from a higher level. Your stop loss is essentially the level in the market where you're wrong, or you wouldn't have enough confident factors to support the current position that you're in, if you plan on entering the trade at that given level. Taking this concept further, we simply need to place our stops on the chart where our technical analysis is no longer valid. This could be below the previous swing low if you're buying a level in the market, or it could be above a Fibonacci retracement level, such as the 786%. The amount of breathing space in the areas that you gravitate towards for your stop loss placement will develop over time, and we'll cover this a little bit more in the mechanical methods of placing your stop losses later on in the 365 days of Forex series. So now that we've taken care of arguably the most important order, which is the stop loss, let's dive into the more positive order, which is of course the take profit or target as I prefer to call it. Placing your target can be often a little bit tricky, but the best idea to keep in mind is that your take profit is just the next area where you think price is likely to reverse at. For example, if you're currently in a sell trade, you may look for a strong level of support to place your take profit at. There are actually many ways you can place your take profit, including placing by market structure, Fibonacci extensions, fixed R targets, and much more. We'll be covering all these in the future episodes, so make sure you like and subscribe, and maybe even drop a comment down below of what you want to know a bit more about in the future episodes. With all that in mind, guys, stay tuned for our next 365 Days video, which will be out in just two days' time. In that video, we're going to discover discretionary trade in a lot more detail than what we've covered today. With that being said, guys, cheers, and I will see you in the next one.